Hi, back in my last mailbag video, I unboxed one of the Sea Sky SBCs. It's a bit of an unusual SBC. Actually, it's not really an SBC at all. Let's see what I thought of it. Yes, and this video is being sponsored by JLC PCB, who provides a professional PCB manufacturing service with a 24 hour turnaround of prototype PCBs. They can produce one to six layer boards of varying thicknesses with track widths down to 0.01 millimeters and support BGAs, cutouts, fingers, and other weird and cool things. They are offering 10 PCBs for only $2 and if you are a first time customer, click on the link below to get $20 off shipping off your first order. So this SBC was pretty cheap when I originally purchased it on AliExpress. You could pick them up for around $9 US. However, they've recently bumped the price up to around $20 US, which is far too much for what it is. But you can still pick it up for around $6 US on other websites like Taobao. So what do you get on this not really an SBC? Starting from the top right, working clockwise. User controllable GPIOs, STM32F103, which handles all the JTAG control over the SOC via micro USB port. User accessible buttons, HDMI capable of 1080p at 25Hz, but the frame buffer is actually 720p, that is upscaled to 1080p. More user accessible buttons, two USB 2.0 ports, DC buck converter supplying 3.3, 1.8 and 1.1 volts to the SOC. Serial console over micro USB. This connects to the CH340G USB to serial bridge, which then connects to the SOC. 32 megabit SPI flash, JTAG USB port, which connects directly into the STM32. Reset button, and the really tiny GX6605S. This has 64 megabyte RAM and will boot from SPI flash. You can also boot from USB, which is actually pretty good, as four megabits isn't a heck of a lot of space for an OS. The only thing of note on the underside is the large copper area acting as a heatsink. The GX6605S is a pretty weird sock. It's loosely based on the MIPS architecture sort of. The instruction set is a derivative of the Motorola Freescale M-Core, previously Motorola RCE, but extends the MIPS instruction set in a weird way. The CPU can be switched between Big Endian and Small Endian, which is unusual, but other socks have this capability as well, so it's not that strange. It also has an amber bus, which is very much an ARM thing. Unfortunately, the datasheet, for want of a better word, is missing a whole lot of stuff, so I can't really see what the pinouts are. So far, there's nothing really flash about this board, apart from the fact that they've gone to all this effort to make it part of mainline Linux. It is a weird chip, and I'm surprised they've bothered with all this effort, considering that most manufacturers are just using ARM-based socks. I suspect that this is a last-ditch effort by the company before they end-of-life it, as there are more capable socks around these days. Anyway, on to booting. The CSKY will boot up into this screen as default. If you have a USB thumb drive with some video on it, it'll play back in full 1080p, able to decode H.264 video without issue. The buttons act as a crude but effective interface. This doesn't make it particularly interesting. Fortunately, you can download a Linux image and burn it to USB flash drive. It will auto detect the flash drive and boot from it. As mentioned before, there's a small handful of GPIOs available. Unfortunately, no hardware ITC or SPI. You can make use of software based ITC bit bashing, but I didn't end up enabling this in the kernel. The default image comes with a handy Python script that'll blink the LEDs and test the buttons, but really not much else to do. Moving on to building my own custom Linux image, which is important as I wanted to build up some Pharonix tests to see what this sock could do. If you've used the build route before, it'll be pretty straightforward. Download from GitHub, run make using the correct config file, then run make again to build everything. 
It should take a while, but once completed, you end up with an output directory which holds a cross-compile build environment, host binaries and utilities, the final USB flash image, and the root FS target. All you need to do now is take the usb.img.xz file and burn it to flash using your favorite flash burny tool thingy. Now that I had a proper default image that could boot, time to customize. I made a number of changes to allow the Fronix test suite to function properly. I won't go into it here, but you can check the config file on my website. Once the build completed, I burnt to flash and rebooted the C-Sky. Ta-da! Nice logo. Wonder how that got there. I also made some changes to the root file system so the networking would start automatically using the USB to Ethernet adapter that I had to use. This is one of the other problems with this SOC. It has no Ethernet capability. Now that I had my custom Linux image made, I had to rebuild all the Fronix tests. There were quite a lot that weren't supported, especially anything thread related, as I couldn't get any decent threading library built. I eventually settled on Cashbench, Himeno, PHPBench and TSCP. Not a great turnout of tests, but enough to give me a rough idea of what this SOC is capable of. So what did I find out? <laughs> well, around 1 200th of the performance of the Odroid XU4 on Cashbench reads, and 1 20th for writes, so at least writes were a little quicker. But read modify write ended up being 1 440th that of the Odroid XU4. This thing is as slow as a wet week. Hermano benchmarks, yeah, well, 43 times slower than a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Both PHP and TSCP benchmarks had similarly poor results. During testing, I saw the temperature hit a max of 49.3 degrees Celsius with an ambient room temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. And the board only drew a max of 400 milliamps during all my tests. Well, I don't know what to think of this board. If the manufacturers would only release more documentation on the hardware side of things, we might have a bit more to go on. Sure, there's support for open source software. It's cool, it's new, but heck, I can't find any redeeming feature for this board. The only thing I can think of is that you can currently get it for around $6 US. So if you enjoy this video, then don't forget to hit like. And if you haven't already subscribed, it'd be great to have you around. You can also support me further by joining the great bunch of cool patrons I have over at Patreon. So thanks for watching and see you next week.